Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are now at the end of the Epiphany season. Throughout this season, we have been uncovering God's glory, glory that God made hidden through the person of Jesus Christ. We've seen how Jesus revealed that glory through miracles, by fulfilling all prophecy. But we also see it on this final Sunday. This final Sunday, the always the last Sunday of Epiphany, is called Transfiguration Sunday, and and it goes and it focuses on one event in Jesus' life. In that event, Jesus walked up a tall mountain where we're not really sure where this mountain was. But he went up this mountain with three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John. And the sole purpose was to pray. And while they were up there praying, something happened. Jesus transformed, which is really what transfigure is really saying. Transfiguration is, is a metamorphosis. Jesus changed his appearance. No longer did he look like a simple human being. No, now he was actually glowing. He was glowing. His clothes were as white as the snow. And then two men appeared. Moses and Elijah, prophets from the Old Testament, who had long gone to heaven. They were there too, speaking to Jesus about a specific event. And that was his exodus, his leaving this earth, and what was going to happen. Just a week before, this event happened, Jesus told his disciples in no uncertain terms that he was going to die, that he was going to be handed over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and he was going to be beaten, and he was going to die. The disciples really didn't want to hear it. In fact, Peter tried to stop him. But now Peter's up on this mountain listening to these two prophets speak with Jesus as he's glowing about what he has come to do. At the end of Epiphany, we're always ready to transition into the next church year. And that year is Lent. And it's during the season of Lent, we again talk about the very subject that Moses and Elijah and Jesus were talking about. His exodus, his leaving this earth after he completed his mission. Jesus came on a mission, and that was to save us from our sins. And so we fittingly look at our Savior, glowing as He does, proving to us that He is the only one who can, who can destroy our sins. The only one who can forgive us and make us right with God, because Jesus is God. He is the very one we need a good relationship with, and, well, He's the one who gave it to us. And so we hear this conversation. We see Jesus glowing, proving once again He really is our God. And then finally we hear God the Father Himself announce that this is my Son, whom I love. With Him I am well pleased. Listen to Him. And so as we close out this Epiphany year, we began our journey to the cross once again in the season of Lent. Let's listen to the Father's advice and let's listen to Jesus and let's watch Him closely. Not to prove to us that He is who He says He is, but once again to show us that we're saved. That we're going to heaven because our sins have been forgiven. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you sent your Son on a specific mission that was to save us from our sins. Lord, you take all our doubts away from the fact of, of Jesus doing it by showing us again and again that he really is your Son, our God. You also show us that he accomplished that mission as he died on the cross, suffering the penalty we deserved, but then rising again, just like he said he would, showing us that he has won that the victory over death is complete, and that we too will one day be with you in heaven. Thank you for revealing all of these assurances. 
And thank you for taking away all the different difficulties and sins and problems that often crush us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may the Lord bless your day.